Hi, everybody. Um, welcome to our second meeting regarding uh, the Redwood Lounge. Thank you all for being here at the ward office and joining us online as well. Um, we have with us this evening, uh, Nick Fatikas is representing the owners um, who want to reopen the Redwood, um, as well as uh, the two young entrepreneurs here with us as well. Um, why don't you guys just go ahead and introduce yourselves? Sure. Yeah. Uh, my name is Sean Wagner. And I'm Jake Faber. Um, so where we left off last time, and it was a while ago, so thanks for thanks for hanging with us. I know it's been uh, for having us again. <laughs> quite some time since our last meeting. Um, you know, I, I think we heard a lot of uh, a lot of feedback on both sides, uh, concerns from neighbors in the immediate vicinity, as well as a lot of support um, for um, bringing some new life to, you know, what feels like a pretty historic establishment um, in the 11th Ward in the Redwood Inn. Um, I, uh, I thought a lot of those uh, concerns could be addressed with the plan of operations of which um, the uh, the guys here along with their attorney have uh, presented. I'm going to share my screen and just share that with the people online so you can see that we've handed out hard copies here. Um, can everybody see my screen? Mm -hmm. Okay, let me just make that a little bit bigger. No, nope, it's not going to let me make it any bigger than that. Um, Nick, do you want to walk us through? Yeah, uh, that's perfect. And again, uh, thank you for the opportunity to, to continue the conversation. Um, basically, where we left off and in the review process was coming up with terms uh, for, again, a plan of operation. And what we discussed last time was the plan of operation is actually a document that gets um, uh, submitted to the Department of Licensing. Um, and essentially adds additional controls or restrictions on a particular license. And as we discussed, this is a, a tavern license. So there is a, obviously a liquor component and the liquor commissioner would be able to consider and essentially tie the liquor license to the plan of operation. Um, so it is a, a meaningful document because it has quite a bit of impact and control on the activities of the business. Um, and to kind of summarize, uh, we did, <clears throat> So there are, we have to follow all of the rules. The first two statements are that we will follow the rules and uh, that this uh, plan of operation will be tied to the license. But in terms of operations, uh, the highlights that I think we wanted to, to make sure everyone was aware of, the hours of operation Sunday through Thursday, the close time uh, will be no later than 11 p.m. And then on uh, Fridays and Saturdays, the close time would be midnight, so 12 a.m. Uh, by comparison, a standard or a typical tavern license allows operations until two o'clock during the week and 3 a.m. on the weekends. So it's a, a later, uh, we're closing much earlier than what the typical license would allow. We also know that, you know, noise levels are uh, a concern to, to nearby residents. And we've agreed as part of this to, to monitor that by having staff kind of walk the area and make sure that there aren't uh, any any kind of noise noises emanating from our, our establishment. We also um, committed to having trash and litter picked up in the immediate vicinity. We would do that twice daily, uh, first at 9 o'clock p.m. and then a second time at, at the actual closing time, just to make sure that overnight everything's kept as tidy as possible. All of our um, employees will be properly Bassett certified uh, and trained. Um, that's a state requirement that the city also imposes or, or requires as part of uh, any type of liquor service, whether it's at a restaurant or at a tavern. So that's part of uh, the requirement for any type of, of liquor service establishment. We also agreed to, uh, I think lighting uh, came up and just making sure that the space was well lit. Um, again, we don't want to intrude and have lights spill over on the neighboring properties, but we can improve the uh, lighting around our uh, the street frontages uh, on both sides of the property. And then lastly, um, we would participate in the regular uh, CAPS meetings with the local police and any type of community meeting process that the alderman would invite us to, we would absolutely, um, you know, want to participate in, uh, and we would be doing that 
uh, regardless, we, we, that's something that was always part of our our program for operations. Um, so it's a it's a ten point uh, plan of operation. Again, it's in draft form. Excuse me, but those were the terms that we thought would help address some of the initial concerns raised at the community meeting. Great, thank you, Nick. Um, so just to for the folks that um, were at that you were all at the last meeting because that's how you got this notification. Mm -hmm. We made sure that everybody that signed in got a, an actual phone call letting you know that we were holding this meeting. Um, I think if you recall to that meeting, the question was asked about security. I just want to make sure I want to recap what your answer was on security. Tell me if I'm wrong about this. Um, during the uh, sort of normal course of things, you're not necessarily going to have security on hand on a regular basis, but on the weekends, especially on game days and things like that, you will have security present. That is correct. Exactly. Okay. okay. Um, and we're, are you going to install security cameras too on the building? Yes. Okay. Um, and then lighting for safety, which I appreciate. Uh, we, we don't want sort of uh, light pollution, but I think anything that brightens up the, the you know, the street um, around there uh, for from a public safety perspective is, is helpful. Nick, would you mind adding that somehow, like memorializing this in this plan of operations? Um, no, just uh, we did item number eight speaks to adding adequate outdoor lighting. But okay, again, add... specific to the establishment, we could we could change the language and, and it, uh, you know, beef no, that up if you'd like. No, that's fine. If you can add the security cameras too, if you want to call that like, you know, safety, um, sure. and then provide access to the cameras to the night district for the, Collins. for their, yeah. Uh, you know, we, we definitely want connectivity of any of these new cameras to the night district uh, so that we can have a couple more eyes on the street. Um, I have one statement that was sent from uh, a neighbor or someone who owns property in the area. He was at the first meeting. He could not be here today. His name is Anthony Chimera, Ch Chimera. Um, and I promised that I would read this um, so for, for everybody's information here. Um, uh, I understand the prospective owners and their attorney prepared are prepared to address concerns expressed back in September when we first met. Unfortunately, he's not able to make it. He's out of town. Um, I'm disappointed that I cannot attend uh, given my adverse position to these plans. Let me be clear. I vehemently oppose the opening of this lounge for the following reasons. One, it is completely unnecessary to establish this business on a residential street when the ward office is completing sound plans just a few blocks west on Halsted for residents to go, to go and frequent a bar or two if necessary. There are another two bars slash restaurants on 33rd Street that can be frequented as well. The days of yesteryear are long gone. Residents in favor of this move need to appreciate that fulfilling any personal need to preserve nostalgia does not and will not guarantee similar future circumstances. Just watch the news or read the news posts. It's a different world and no one can deny the increased criminal behavior we are presently experiencing. The quote unquote neighborhood has welcomed a number of bars over the past 40 to 50 years. Trisky Lions on 30th and Canal, Studio 31 on 31st and Emerald, the Cabaret on 26th and Halstead, Punchinello's on 31st and Princeton, and the recently closed bar, he cannot recall the name, on 32nd uh, Street, just two blocks east of Wallace and Normal, I believe. There are reasons the city of Chicago stopped issuing licenses once they closed. There were problems and then there will be more problems in this climate. Four, the topic of video gaming, I believe, was not addressed when we met. This is a slippery slope to becoming a reality at this bar because it makes money. This will only attract other unwanted and unnecessary issues. Five, the combination of now legalized cannabis with alcohol is an unpleasant and dangerous combination mm -hmm. at gambling and it's a recipe for disaster. At six, I have tenants nearby and I do not need calls of complaining patrons nearby causing issues due to intoxication or mere disturbances. And I certainly do not wish to have to make calls. Seven, again, why create potentially unwanted scene and circumstance in an otherwise quiet residential area forcing good people to possibly move away? I'm sure that this is not the intention of the older woman and her staff. Eight, I'm sure without my presence at this meeting, there's the opportunity for others to speak against my points. Know that I'm willing to speak personally to any concerned resident about my position and in fact, encourage it. I'm almost done. Nine, remember, if this deal goes through, it becomes the residents issues 
as soon as the door is open. Shame on any politician for placing this burden on the very people who put him or her in office for political gain. My vote is a resound, number 10, my vote is a resounding no on this deal. There are other ways uh, the young entrepreneurs can make money. Infusing alcohol while jeopardizing the quiet enjoyment of our neighborhood should not be considered a viable option. In fact, in today's day and age, the thought is despicable. 11, I'm very proud of my connection to Bridgeport and I don't care to tarnish its image in any way or uproot people's lives. It can all be avoided simply by disapproving the motion. Do the right thing. So, sorry, that is my child calling me. Um, that was from uh, Mr. Chimera. I'm going to give the two of you guys an opportunity to respond to some of that, and Nick, as you as well. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I'll obviously I'll, I'll I'll defer to Sean um, on on any other specifics, but I think the points that we want to make, and I think the points that were really focused on during the last uh, presentation, are first off the physical space is there, and I think that it's it's a different starting point when you take into context that the redwood was there for for decades this is not intended to be a late night nightclub frankly i don't believe this is going to become a destination of any sort where folks from outside the neighborhood are going to venture in and pass however many bars there are on holstead and some of the busier streets to come to a neighborhood bar what we're trying to do is revitalize the space that has been used as a bar that was a neighborhood corner bar for decades and bring it back to life. We think that in many respects, the um, the plan of operation that's proposed is kind of our, our way to show good faith that, that again, we, we don't wanna operate late. We don't wanna have a late night dance crowd. The idea is to use the space and again, offer people in the neighborhood a place to meet, a place to watch a game, and at 11 o'clock during the week or 12 o'clock on weekends, go home. And we're hoping that and anticipate that many of the folks will be walking home because this is really intended to, to provide a service or to provide a, a meeting location for folks in the neighborhood. Um, I appreciate the argument on nostalgia. We all know that times have changed. You know, We're not proposing cannabis, um, so I, I can't really speak to that. Uh, gaming, is, as far as we know today, is, in a, is not allowed in the city of Chicago. Um, so I think, and the other point that I wanted to make, um, one of the other protections that I think is inherent in the space is that just that, the physical space. And we were all in that space uh, for the community meeting. This is not a large bar with outdoor areas and different levels. I mean, it's a, it's a pretty modest sized space. And right now it's not being used, it's it's inactive, not being used or benefiting anybody, whether it's a residential unit or whether it's commercial uh, space. So we have this dead space and we're coming to the community, we're coming to the alderman to try and reactivate it. And we think that this use does have a bit of a nostalgic touch to it, but it also is something that is, if controlled and, and managed properly, could actually become a benefit to the folks that live in the immediate area. Um, Sean, I did a lot of talking there. So if you want to supplement, uh, you're more than welcome to. Sure. Yeah, I agree with all the points that Nick made. Um, also regarding uh, Mr. Chimera's remarks, mm -hmm. uh, the geographical location between the Halstead and the 33rd Street, it's still about 0.75 miles away from each one. So if you're looking for a neighborhood watering hole, it's still quite a bit of a walk in the cold. Um, so we think it's centrally located and we want people to walk there. We want people on the neighboring blocks to go. And we just want to build the community, help the community, uh, revitalize some of the commercial stuff in Bridgeport in the 11th Ward in its entirety. Um, and any concerns that anyone has, we're, we're happy to address them. We're happy to work with the community, but we just think that there's a need. Not, you know, need might be uh, take it for what you will but there's a want to have something like that in the area. And we are trying to provide that for the community as well as obviously we consider ourselves businessmen, mm -hmm. but uh, we know we're not gonna get rich on it. It's 800 square feet. Um, we just feel it's the best use of the space. It was previously there. We feel like there is uh, a want for it and we respect the community and we would never wanna do anything that would jeopardize our position with the community as it's most of our friends and family as well. 
And we don't want to create a dangerous environment like some of these concerns that mm -hmm. you voice. I mean, those cause issues for us as well. We want to provide the safest space where people can have fun and hopefully there's no harm and and so forth. Can I? All right, let's get the meeting. Can I? Yeah, please go ahead. He said that gaming is illegal in Chicago, but there's a slot machine in Martinez Taco that a girl is always, a woman's always on. When you enter the thing, it's right in the little corner. Nick, are there are there gambling machines that are they're not like uh are those like sweepstakes? Machines. Yeah, so right now, and I don't want to say loophole on a recording on a recording, but I believe <laughs> that there is a lapse in the uh, rules for those sweepstakes machines. Um, my understanding is that city council may be already is considering or maybe considering um, to outlaw that activity as well, because outside of the Illinois gaming approved uh, casino. Gaming is still not allowed in the city of Chicago. So I, I I think the Martinez example, I don't know for certain, but I believe that's likely a sweepstakes machine. Otherwise, mm -hmm. they would have um, Illinois State Police shutting them down if they were yeah. uh, allowing gaming illegally. So one one potential way to address that is, you know, I I don't know that you all had an interest in that, but if you were willing to commit to not having any sweepstakes or when at some point, yeah. So basically it, it is a loophole, right? So a sweepstakes yeah. machine gives you like a coupon <laughs> for something versus a cash payout. I think it was cash because I believe that she went out to the counter and the woman gave her money. Mm -hmm. Okay. Separate issue for Martinez. I will look into that. Uh, but uh, I, I want to just, you know, I, I think I'm going to throw it out there because it was raised by, you know, Mr. Chimera as well as you. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm just letting you know at this meeting, yeah. I've seen it, and that's been a while ago. So, I mean, I don't know if it's still there. Well, yeah. One machine only. Oh. I don't think it's the only establishment in the ward with <laughs> one such machine. So I'll, we'll, we'll leave it at that. Okay. Julie, did you have a question? Because obviously we'll have to Please. Like the security <laughs> on premises, someone who's licensed and bonded as a security person, or hey, my cousin would be there or whoever can mm -hmm. come and I didn't put it back in be bodyguard at the bar. Uh, as security is necessary, we would make sure everyone's licensed to do right. anything in the facility, whatever that job entails. Because again, we're right across the street. Right. So we're impacted. You guys aren't living right there on the premises. And people are already I live there. causing issues like on Wallace. So then, you know, we don't want whoever's spilling out now of the bar because you close the door is now traversing through the yards, the neighborhoods. Like, you know, like the drunk, like I know you guys are going to clean up and you've skated through mm -hmm. things, but even now cars are flying down at 80 miles per hour in the middle of the night because I stay up late, you know, I work odd hours. Mm -hmm. I'm going to ask for a speed bump at some point. <laughs> I feel bad, like they blow the stop sign. Not the stop sign is blown all the time. But, yeah. you know, you guys are directly right on that corner, too. Now we have people, because not everyone's going to be walking to the left. Like, there are people that are going to drive. They used to drive to first base. Even if they lived two blocks down, they would still pull up their cars at first base. That's the bar that used to be at 30 seconds. Okay. Um, or not part, yeah. Normal. 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 So, I mean, the nostalgia from the days back, like we said at the last meeting, it's a different school than the old school. The old school neighbor the owner used to be like, shut it down three o'clock, get your drinks, get out. Yeah, you we're can shut it down at midnight. Night. I hope it's midnight. Yeah, it says, 11 on it says no later than no later than, but I don't know if there's an addendum there. Like, is midnight? midnight no, it, midnight? Yeah, this is the, the plan like, of operations. Yeah. The plan of operations is what they're held to. A right. standard tavern license without this in there would give them the opportunity to stay open during the week till two and on the weekends till three. That would we be the admit this. Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. 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 Given the space, I guess, I mean, we would not see that there would be a ton of threat where we need a bunch of security officers. But if we found that things were escalating or that it would be needed, yeah. we'd be open to definitely. Right. No, no, I mean license because we dealt with this before on the other side of the Dan Ryan on 35th uh -huh. Murray when they came through with the whole plan and this is what we're going to do to open a bar and 
it was night and day what was attended versus what was really happening on the premises uh, in the third year. So that's why I don't want to go down that for me personally. Got it. Right there, I don't want to have to be dealing with your office, mm -hmm. the city building, you know, for nuisance. Gotcha. Yes. Um, I just have a question. So in your experience, um, for instance, if they don't follow these rules, how easy is it to exercise penalties? Um, so if if they're so if they're violating any laws, the business affairs and consumer protections as, as well as the liquor commission will come in uh, and find them and go as far as to shut them down. Uh, those are all things. If the police, it, it, let's say, God forbid there be issues there where somebody is shot. Right. Um, I, I'm going to go worst case scenario. Let's just go there for a second. Um, the police always have the ability for a summary closure um, until some things are addressed. So that that is always at the discretion of CPD. Um, what happens where let's say there, let's say what happened to you in the third ward with that bar happens here. Um, and we we get complaints that they're not following their plan of operations. I raise this with BACP. Um, we can have what's called a community meeting process where essentially we take the owners to task about all of the things that they're violating from their plan of operations, their corrective actions that are ordered. Um, and if they don't adhere to that and the, the community meeting is essentially not successful um, in addressing the items that we're discussing or whatever the complaints are from the neighborhood, um, they could be shut down. I mean, they could pull your license, essentially. That's not a that's not a quick process. I will be clear with you about that. Um, you have to understand too, if you're a business owner, you don't want it to be so easy for someone to just shut you down. Um, so there's due process in all of this. I just want to, I want to be really clear. I don't want to sugarcoat any of these things. Um, we had an instance in Chinatown with a number 18 karaoke bar uh, where they chronically had, um, had issues. They had party promoters that were bringing in a different kind of crowd. A, a woman lost her life um, as an innocent bystander standing outside uh, when a fight uh, spilled out from inside the inside the karaoke bar onto the street and people went and got their guns. Um, so we uh, that was almost a year long process with them. Uh, you know, their hours were cut. They were ordered to by the BACP to uh, hire better security and additional security. Um, there were a lot of there were a lot of restrictions put on them. They are still open today, uh, but with a lot of other a lot of improvements to what's going on and uh, believe me the community is constantly watching them um you know and i have no doubt that it, should this happen uh should should a license be issued here um that this community will be watching and i, I said that to you guys at the meeting too and, and i will be right there with them yeah um because if, if i'm getting calls about stuff i'm not going to be happy um and certainly we don't want people who are neighbors directly to be negatively impacted by this. Um, I don't have any reason to believe that you guys have any like um, ill intent. I think everybody's concerns are the factors that you have no control over at the end of the day, um, which sometimes might be clientele. So, you know, the, the plan of operations allows us to really address some of the concerns that we can see now. Um, look, we don't have a crystal ball. I know one of the things that Mr. Uh, Chimera said in his note was just you know we're, we we live in different times i it, and it is my hope that we don't live in uh, such a, a a time that is so different that uh, a neighborhood establishment and the hours are very modest for a tavern um and the, 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 that i appreciate that you you heard us all of us when we first met in september with the concerns about the the operations um i would ask that on the cleanup of the so we want we want you to bring a benefit to the community. So I think that you know we'd like to establish a perimeter um, around which you would go. So not just on that corner, right. but you know take a lap, go across the street, um, go kitty corner to where Simon lives, and make sure that you pick up in front of his place too. Um, so we'll I, I'll give you a little bit of direction. That would be my preference if we're going to if we're if we're making edits to this draft plan of operations, um, that's one of the things that I would uh, I definitely want to make sure that we're including here. Um, that's no problem. Okay. Yeah, we would want to enforce that very much. So, I mean, it would definitely reflect the business in there as well if there's garbage around. So we want a clean environment for not only the neighbors, but the business itself. 
There uh, in the previous meeting was there a distinction made with the license in terms of like I mean obviously this is eight only eight hundred square feet but in terms of why use all those other things. Um, I don't know that I totally understand your question, but maybe Nick Fatikas can answer. Go ahead. This, yeah, this. would you mind? Would you mind re-asking that? I, I didn't hear it clearly. No, I know certain um, certain issues that came up with some other uh, establishments were um, more centered around parties being thrown or you know, certain events that I don't think that this has the square footage to even uh, even contemplate. Um, is that I, I was just asking what what this what the license with the zoning would allow in this situation considering the the physical space as you said or is that just a physical yeah space? so we we we're not we're not big enough to to be a public place of amusement right. which is another limiting factor um of just the physical space so what's that's the, not something we're even eligible for the what's the maximum license, capacity pardon me you know what the maximum capacity occupancy is for that we're, space? We're, we're under 100, and there's only 800 square feet of calculable square footage. We'd have to check the old occupancy. My guess is it's going to mirror that. Yes. Um, they, so they were in the room. They're saying it was about 50. Yeah. Right. That sounds right. I had 60 in my head, but I don't. I don't. Again, I don't want to state it incorrectly. And that's and, in full capacity. That's not. You know. Uh, uh, Sunday night, and, and just for the the uh, individuals in attendance, not a public place of amusement. What is and what's that distinction effectively for? So for no no live, out? no live music, no ticketed events, no private events, no party promoters, and really all the things that I think um, you probably had to deal with in some of the other uh, larger locations that had some trouble. Um, mm -hmm. We fit. We just we've physically can't <laughs> we're just unfortunately we're not that so we don't we, that's not uh something we'd have a, a right to to seek a license for thank you thanks matt hey um i just wanted to uh give some just a quick thought before i have to run out because i'm late for valentine for a zoning meeting i've got bigger okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh man <laughs> I, I live about a block away at 32nd in, in Union and um, was able to connect with the owners after last meeting. And you know, I think that the concerns of the immediate neighbors are, are really valid. Hopefully that the operating plan can address a lot of those. But just as somebody who lives nearby, um, I think it's really great that we're looking at potentially um, renewing these corner bars, so to speak. I think that there's a lot of history in the neighborhood with private institutions that are social clubs or even the VFW a couple doors down that are able to integrate with the neighborhood really well without causing um, a kind of impact. So I think really potentially having something that is largely serving a lot of the local neighbors for, for me is, is very exciting and somebody who would like to be able to walk to a place like this after a Sox game. But um, and then, so just wanted to give just a quick voice of, of support. And then also uh, the bar actually was rated for illegal gaming machines way back when. So <laughs> if this moves forward, don't let them strike twice. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's just wanted to share some more thoughts. But I appreciate I that, Matt. Time to listen to it. Thank, Thank you. Thanks, Julie, what's the experience with the VFW down the street? I know you're not right across the street from that, they're but quiet. You wouldn't even know they're, they're there. there. Quiet as a mouse. Okay. You don't see anyone coming and going. You don't see anyone leaving with a cup in their hand. Yeah. Like it, it and I don't even think they're open that late. Like they're oh, not the nuisance. Funny. If anything, I unfortunately I would say the medical building on the corner <laughs> brings the okay. nuisance to the block. Oh boy. Like the parking, like yeah. the people, the tenants, whoever's using that parking lot. That's mm -hmm. where all the garbage, like, mm -hmm. like that's a nuisance spot for the so bus stop there, right? Yeah. 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 We could easily uh, Take care of that garbage, even in I know the parking lot on the side there. Yeah, yeah. We clean their garbage. <laughs> yeah. Any other? I mean, go ahead, please. I'd like to just ask a question. Um, I know you don't want to track like you know gangs and stuff like that, but is there anything you can do legally without um, to to stop that? Or, or well, the only thing just... I can think of uh, is. Probably about 80% of my friends and family group is a uh, Chicago law enforcement. Mm -hmm. So I think that's, I mean, we support law enforcement. And we hope to have a lot large presence of law enforcement, probably in the establishment. Okay. Outside of that, I don't know. I mean, the armed security, 
Um, we can't refuse entry to someone just because of how they look, essentially. Right. But everything else that we could do, if someone we believe doesn't belong in the establishment, mm -hmm. we're willing to take any measure within our legal capability to do so. Okay. I know it's a difficult balancing act. Right. So I just don't know how that works. Yeah. Please. It used to be a police car. Yeah. So maybe mm -hmm. some of them will come back. <laughs> the guys on 35th need somewhere to go. They do need somewhere to go. So do I. Okay. Um, any questions from folks that are on the, the Zoom? I didn't see any questions in the chat necessarily. What's the time frame for you guys? If this one's that. Uh, uh, I'll let Nick answer that. Nick, yeah, you... so there's a, there's a two-step process involved. The first is a zoning change. Um, this would be um, if, if we had support and we had uh, the alderman's blessing to move forward, the earliest that we could file a zoning change application would be for March introduction, which wouldn't be heard by the committee on zoning until uh, the April committee date. Assuming we uh, are recommended for approval and, and the change is approved, um, we then would have to work through the liquor license application process, which is going to require uh, or is going to take uh, typically 90, 90 days at a minimum. There's a notice, a second notice provision for the license. Um, that's when we, when we make that application, we submit the plan of operation. My best guess is the liquor commissioner, uh, Shannon Trotter will work with Alderman Lee to make sure that all of the points that we've discussed and agreed to make their way into the, uh, plan of operation. So there's no confusion on that. Presuming that that all works out, if I'm doing my math right, major, we're probably looking at a, a, a summer, a potential opening July, August would be the absolute earliest that unfortunately for for Sean uh unfortunately we'd be able to open there's still some there's still some red tape to work through um on the city side and, and that's again the zoning process and then the licensing process so to be clear because I don't want this to get lost anywhere because the zoning change is required and just to just for the record here Nick uh it's currently zoned uh residential so so it's currently RS3, which is typical single family uh, zoning. Which it's this a building clearly is not. <laughs> it's a non-conforming building. Um, but again, we have no plans to do anything in terms of expansion or changes to the units, residential units above. So we would seek a zoning change from RS3 to C1-1. The dash one alderman is the lowest density uh, mm -hmm. allowance. So no changes would be allowed anyway. Um, and then the C1 is what makes us eligible for the tavern use. Right. So one of the things that came up previously, I think when we discussed back in September, um, was what's to stop. Like, so if you, let's say you're not successful or something, you decide to sell the property, what, you know, can we stop somebody? Cause if, yeah, you could, you could transfer, um, one of the things that we discussed, Nick, and please tell me if I'm wrong about this, if I'm recalling this incorrectly, we can, we can facilitate the the zoning change uh, just long enough so that you can get the license that you need and we can down zone it again uh, for the assurance of the neighborhood, if you will, um, that the next person, if there is to be a change of something that there's the ability to sort of control, have a little bit more control over what happens with the property. Is that right, Nick? 100% right. And I'd add in without being redundant on the plan of operation, the plan of operation would tie to the license so mm -hmm. if let's just say Sean wins the lottery and sells his bar to somebody else, they're they're stuck with that same commitment on the plan of operation. That's specific to the license and the establishment, regardless of who's running the establishment. But again, that's not our intent. I just want to give everybody some level of comfort. On top of that, well, after the licenses and the new certificate of occupancy issue, once we pass the inspections and the license issues, uh, we could downzone the property back to R3 and effectively lock in this particular tavern subject to this particular plan of operation. And any new change down the road would require the same process that we've worked through uh, for the last few months with your office. So there'd be two layers of insurance, so to speak, um, on, on any type of change in use, you know, down the road. Okay, thank you for clarifying that. And that's what I would look to do should this move forward. I, I would wanna be able to provide that level of assur um, assurance to the community. Um, 
Yeah, that's what I would look to do. Um, you know, I, I've gotten a lot of feedback and I appreciate all of you that have come um, to provide your perspectives on these and, and your concerns. I mean, is there anything else that you've thought of since September? Julie, you've been through this a couple of times now. Um, you know, I I, I want to assure everybody that that if things go sideways with this establishment, I, I will be very active in making sure that those things get ameliorated or addressed as, as quickly as possible. Um, I don't mess around with that. We, we all live in this community. You have family here, you know, um, you live right across the street, others, and you live upstairs in the building. So um, I, I think folks have uh, a vested interest in. Yeah, we have family in the building as well. Okay. So, I mean, yeah. Our, my sister and mother is in the building on okay. the first floor. So if anyone's going to be impacted, it's like who's sharing well with her. Right. I got it. And then um, obviously you guys own the building. So you're, you know, you're going to have your own concerns about just noise levels for your tenants up above um, as well. And if you want to be able to keep renters, you have to have a good environment for your tenants. Right. Um, you said no food, right? Or Yeah, no, no, no food. food. There's just right. no, food. Food. there's no room. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like like, like yeah we're maybe thinking about trying to partner with like a local place like pizza and maybe they can bring in at certain hours or promotions or right but if we would have food if we could there's just not room there's not like, there's no space for a kitchen yeah no it's it's strictly a tavern license but they do like partnerships or collaborations with you know maybe it's maybe it's martinez one night where you're yeah. where you've got tacos or yeah. you know fills for pizza another night or sure. something um I, I think that's what we discussed last time and i you know i I like that idea because it's the community supporting the community. Right. Um, you know, um, and that does help to sort of limit um, you know, the the uses over there. Oh, no, we're all for yeah. revitalizing and yeah. like we're not anti yeah. our obviously we went to the Redwood <laughs> back in the day, but I'm saying it's the old school to the new school, it's night and day. Like yeah. the way they ran it back, you know, like sure. you, know, you know, like when you were there, it's different. Those days are gone. In well, part. hopefully we'll, but hopefully we're preserving some of, we're, we're, we're going to try to bring back some of that neighborhood feel. Is the signage thing the same or big? Well, or, the I know you mentioned lights and we don't want to yeah. put too many light. like, I, I don't know if you guys discussed in the beginning, are you guys changing out the whole signage? Um, there's some somehow restoring. restoring, we don't want it to be like noxious in your face with right. the lighting, just enough to provide some sort of layer of security that if you're outside walking on the street. Right. But nothing like a neon sign. You're it's keeping like, the same sign that you guys current, had. Under its current condition, it is damaged. Okay. So there would be either some restoration or a new sign maybe added um, that we have not made a final decision on. Yeah. I know that yeah. the rendering or something was part of what you need or not, like awning wise or mm -hmm. on the sidewalk. So I think. Alderman, if I could chime in. Please. You'd also you'd also have oversight of any kind of signage as like part of the public way. So, yeah. so you would know whether or not a, a neon sign was being proposed. Uh, you'd know before anybody else. So that's not obviously part of our plan. I think the what we discussed last time was you know restoring, refabbing what's there and trying to kind of yeah. hold on to that. Yeah, uplighting it a little bit. I mean, I right. I think part of the part of the nostalgia is the Keeping the the sign. The, the sign, yeah. Right. Um, whatever you can do to to do that. We hope to do so. Yeah. Okay. I have one last question. Sure, please. Since someone brought up the transfer, so if they do, if it, uh, I wish you guys the best, but if it does fail and they transfer that liquor license, they have they have to do that. This is a hard lesson that they learned because the person that owned the bar previously that there's an eighteen month window mm -hmm. uh, in which you can transfer a license um they missed that window by a Three month, months, yeah, yeah. yeah like so this is why they're going through this entire process so the previous owner let the license lapse and unbeknownst to them the timing didn't work out i mean had that been the case they would have just been able to open up because it was already you know the you're transferring the license and they, they're grandfathered in essentially at that point yeah so but there's an 18 month period um, where the and Nick, keep me honest on this. I believe it's an 18 month uh, window. 18 months. Or, 18 months from the expiration of the most uh, recent license. And like right. you said, Alderman, this the entire process that we're working through is because we got to the property approximately a month after expiration. So the city's quite yeah. diligent uh, yeah. when it's a non-conforming, and that's actually triggered by the non-conforming zoning 
which I think furthers that insurance of the down zone after the fact to help, again, maintain some level of control on, on the operations. But even if that, I want to be clear on this, even if the transfer is done per, or during that 18 month window, the transfer is subject to the plan of operation. So it's not as if the, the right. license can be transferred it. freely, it's subject to. So I guess my question was, do you still have to approve? I mean, these guys are, I think, pretty it, good guys. Yeah. Do you it, still have to approve yes, go forward with this? I don't I don't get a say in a transfer because that's just that's a private transaction and the license is transferred if it's within that 18 month window. Um, oh. Because okay. that's not that's not issuing a new license. That's just transferring a license. Uh, but because they are held to the same plan of operations, if they want to if they want to stray from this at all, then yes, I I would be involved at that point. Okay. Um, I'm sorry. Smokers. Back in the day, you could smoke inside. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> I'm not a yeah. I hated that about it. But definitely. Where not would allowed. you guys be? No, I know they can't smoke. Obviously, in there. Richard. But now they're outside. <laughs> if they're outside smoking, like. Where's the parameter of where you're going to have people smoking outside? Because obviously, if you're a tenant, your windows open. Now you're getting people smoke in the summertime. Sure. I mean, it's a, it's a nuisance. What's the curious. Nick? What's the city ordinance on? Uh, is it 15 feet from the mm -hmm. from the entrance? 15 feet from the entryway. So my guess is it would be the side street, not Towards the, the front. Correct. Oh, Okay. And I also think having, again, you know, having staff on site to monitor that so people aren't roaming the area is something that we, I believe we we could control um, with a limited capacity of people. Yeah. And that 15 foot rule, I, I think, you know, it really kind of um, designates a, a, an area where folks, if they do want to go outside and have a cigarette, they're they're able to do so. Yeah. So you can designate an area, make sure there's, you know, a uh, yeah, some sort of receptacle. It'll yeah, make yeah. your life a lot easier when you've got to do the cleanup yeah. too. For sure, for sure. Yeah. 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 <laughs> All right. Um, I'm mindful of the time, and I've got another meeting sort of right after this. Um, Nick, if you could capture all of the things that we sort of talked about tonight. I am inclined to provide a support uh, letter for the zoning change uh, based on all the interaction that we've had and the discussions that we have. I, I'm satisfied that you're addressing um, the concerns that have been raised by the community. Um, and I'll reiterate again, you know, we, we can't predict the future. I think we I think we want your commitment to work with us to make sure that um, things don't go sideways and you don't want that for your investment. We don't want that for the community. Um, so, you know, I think keep an open line of communications. Um, CAPS meetings are uh, every other month. Check the newsletter and, uh, you know, Julie and I will see you at the daily library for those every other month. You know, we'll, we'll have every expectation that, you know, one or both of you stops in on that and we can have discussion if there's anything that needs to be addressed and, you know, maybe how you can also help um, with things that are going on. Right. Okay. All right. Thanks very much, everybody. So keep an eye out. You you will get some sort of notification in the mail about the zoning change request. Uh, just to recap, uh, all of the things that we discussed today with the plan of operations, um, these adjustments that we noted, and we'll we'll share like the final version um, when once that's uh, that's not for a little while yet. But I will ask that we down zone um, the property as soon as all of these other permits have been issued and they they receive their certificate of occupancy. You have that commitment from me that we will do that so that we have that extra layer of protection. Okay. If you put your email address on the sign in sheet, I'll give you informal updates when when possible. Um, if you didn't and you just like to take my email and email me separate at a certain time for any reason, you're also welcome to to do that as well. Um, it's in the chat. We also have this recorded. If, yeah, know. and I'll I'll post this on the Love and Ford YouTube channel. We'll you'll get a link in the next newsletter. All right. Thank you, everybody. Yeah. Well, if you're not, if you don't want to recycle them, thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thanks, thank Nick. you all. Thanks, Nick. Thanks, Nick. Thanks, Bye, guys. Time. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks again for your time. Appreciate it. You got it. Thank you. This